the crocs who call the murky depths of the Proserpine River home harbour a myriad of secrets, including why they haven't migrated to the tourist mecca of Ely Beach, just 30 kilometres away. It really is as close to being in Jurassic Park, I hate to say it, um, more than anything else. There's such large crocodiles in high densities in fairly sort of tropical, um, a fairly tropical area. And they are just around the corridor from Ely Beach. But it's not just the number of crocs that baffle researchers, it's also the size. On the last uh, helicopter survey, within a 10 kilometre stretch, we found 24 crocodiles over four metres. And that's really unique in such, a, in such a small area. And there's animals in this river system that exceed five metres and could even be up around six in some cases. For the first time ever, a team of researchers are on a mission to trap and tag the big crocs. The fact that you have such a big population of crocs really at carrying capacity, uh, generally what happens in those situations is that they do move out and disperse from the rivers because there's no space left. So for us, we want to understand why that is and whether that's going to be the status quo into the future or whether we're looking at uh, a stage in the near future where crocodiles may start to venture into these tourist destinations, which is not ideal. The team set beta traps overnight for a week, targeting 4.5 metre plus males. They monitor the traps using cameras and after confirming a successful catch, head back the next morning. All right, guys, get ready. It's gonna explode, eh? Okay, set the rope, set it high. Moving carefully, the team firstly tie rope around the crocodile's upper jaw to maneuver him. Okay, guys, let's pull. It's not an easy task, even with six people pitching in. They then sedate the crocodile before wrapping duct tape around its mouth. Holes are drilled through the animal's scales to attach a tracking device, a procedure they say doesn't hurt the croc. The whole process takes around an hour before the reptile is released back into the wild. Tour guide Mark Norman has spent two decades on the river and knows the system and its crocs like the back of his hand. Uh, well, this is Bullfed's territory at the moment, so Bullfed's a big croc, been around for a long, long time up here. He's probably about oh, 4.4 maybe, who knows? Around about that size, but he's a pretty solid old croc. While initially sceptical, he's now excited to see what the results will say. It's a very good bit of research to get done, is, is um, satellite tracking to see the movements of these animals and try to understand on how the actual system works. It's, um, it's very much um, good, good research. The team now have eyes in the river from the comfort of their office. It was a huge success actually. We would have been happy with even three animals um, tagged and we were lucky enough to get four in the end. Uh, their sizes were ranging from 3.9 through to 4.3 was our largest animal. We're seeing a bit of a distinct pattern with the four crocs that we've caught so far. Most of it is just hanging around the area that they were caught in, but there is a few that have ventured down little streams and downstream, not quite to the mouth, but just down a little bit. So we do get it updated every 24 hours. So it is quite exciting each day just to be able to log back in and have a look at what they're actually doing. But it's still early days with the answers another 18 months away. Until then, the secrets of the Proserpine Crocs will remain a mystery.